Hello and welcome to Otten Math, another exciting edition of Otten Math, talking about the hypotenuse leg postulate. We're going to do some problems around this postulate. So we have two two column proofs to do. Let's take a look. All right, the first problem, and you can do this on your own, you can pause this after your, uh, after I explain the problem to you, and then you can go on to see the answer. I have two of these. So I'm given that uh, and I'll mark up the diagram in a subsequent uh, slide. So given that uh, segment BE is perpendicular to AD, segment AC is perpendicular to BD, we're also given that AC is congruent to BE, DE is congruent to EC, and we want to prove that DEC is an equilateral triangle. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem. This is, and we're getting on to lengthier proofs here. So I have BE perpendicular to AD, AC perpendicular to BD. So I've marked up the diagram here. Uh, BE congruent or uh, perpendicular to AD and AC perpendicular to DB. So I've drawn the right uh, angle marks respectively. And I know that um, angle AEB and BCE are right angles and that's definition of perpendicular lines. And I can say that angle AEB is congruent to BCE because right angles are congruent to each other. And I'm going to say that AB is congruent to itself. So AB, let's use a different color than red here. AB is congruent to itself. All right, so I have the two right angles and AB is congruent to itself. So I have angle uh, AEB, AEB and angle <clears throat> ACB that are right angles, and I have AB that's congruent to itself. Now it looks like I have the hypotenuse here of the two triangles. All right, so now I'm also going to say that uh, AC is congruent to BE. So AC is congruent to BE, and that was given, and I marked them up with little uh, circles here. So AC and EB are congruent, and those look like the two legs. So now I can say that triangle EBA is congruent to triangle CAB by the HL postulate. I have my hypotenuse here, and I have my two legs here, and I have my right angles here and here. So by the hypotenuse leg postulate, I know that triangle AEB is congruent to BCB, BCE. Now as a result of that, I also know that angle EAB is congruent to CBA. So EAB is congruent to CBA. So let's mark it up. EAB is congruent to CBA. All right. Then I can say that DA is congruent to DB because if the angles are congruent, the sides opposite them are congruent. So DA and DB are congruent. Then I'm going to say that AE is congruent to BC, AE is congruent to BC, and that was given. So AE, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to say DE is congruent to EC. So DE is congruent to EC. We have DE and EC are congruent to each other, and that is given. I'm also going to say that AE is congruent to um, BC, so AE is congruent to BC by CPCTC. So I've proven that these two triangles are congruent. I'm going to say that AE and BC are congruent by CPCTC. Okay, so now I have DE congruent to EC, EA congruent to CB. I have DA congruent to DB. Now I can say that DE is congruent to DC. And why can I say that? It's because if I subtract congruent segments from congruent segments, so I subtract EA from DA, and I subtract CB from DB, then I know that the differences are going to be congruent. So I can say that DC is going to be congruent to DA. So DC congruent to DA. So I'm going to mark that up here. <clears throat> uh, so DE is congruent to DC which we've just proven. Now I can say that EC is congruent to DC because if segments are congruent to the same segment, then they are congruent. So now I have DE, EC, and DC that are all congruent. I can say that DEC is an equilateral triangle. All right, in my next proof, I'm given that angle R 
and W are right angles uh, to RX, and RX is congruent to WX. So RX is congruent to WX, and angle R and W are right angles. I'm also given that S is 3 sevenths of the way from R to T, V is 4 sevenths of the way from T to W, and I want to prove that ST is congruent to TV. All right, so now I'm going to mark up the diagram. Um, I have the two right angles, XRS and XWV, or just angle R and W. I know that XR is congruent to XW. I've marked that up. All right, and then we'll wait for the, um, the proportionate um, segments uh, as we work through the uh, two-column proof. So angle R and W are right angles. That's given. I've marked the diagram. Angle R is congruent to uh, W. Right angles are congruent. Now I'm going to say that Rx is congruent to XW. So I know that that's the case uh, because that's given. And then I'm going to draw segment XT. So I draw an auxiliary line uh, from X to T. And I, my reason for that is two points determine a line. And I'm going to say that XT is congruent to itself. All right, so that's going to be my hypotenuse in this case. So XT is my hypotenuse. And let's uh, draw a solid figure here. So XT now is going to be my hypotenuse. So XT is congruent to itself. I have my right angle. That's my hypotenuse. So I can say that triangle RXT is congruent to WXT because of the HL postulate. I have my hypotenuse, again, XT my two legs XR and XW and my two right angles R and W. And then I'm going to say that segment RT is congruent to TW or RT is congruent to WT by CPCTC. So I have again RT congruent to TW by CPCTC. Then I'm going to state that S is 3 sevenths of the way from R to T. So I'll just write this is 3 and this is 4 and TV is 4 sevenths of the way from uh, T to W. So this is 4 and this is 3. Now I can also say by subtraction that ST is 4 sevenths of the way from uh, R to T. So as a result, I can say now that ST is congruent to TV because if two segments are congruent, they're like divisions are going to be congruent.